Many of the logic synthesizers have a consistent uh, modulation assignment matrix in the middle of their interface. You'll see this on ES2, EXS24, and a, a varied version on Sculpture. And it makes it very easy to have the dimensions of touch from the seaboard rise manipulate important parameters within your synthesizer. I had this great patch up in ES2 called Wave Pad Groove 1. Let's check out the sound here. Has a nice rhythm to it. It's kind of a deep sound. You know, I think it would work really well, kind of synchronized to my project. Uh, we also noticed that it has some motion to it that's kind of automatically cyclic. It kind of gets brighter and gets duller in time. And that's created with an LFO. And let's see in the modulation matrix how that was configured. We see that cutoff 2 is a modulation destination. LFO2 is the modulation source, and the modulation amount was adjusted with this fader, which I'll reduce down to zero right now. So that way that LFO won't be doing anything. But now I can start assigning parameters to respond to the dimensions of touch. The first thing I'm interested in is maybe to get some pitch motion based on pressure. And we see that pitch one already is a destination being controlled by control B. Let me just change from control B and put that to touch. And touch is shortened from after touch. And remember that the press dimension on the seaboard rise transmits after touch MIDI messages. So if I Try that. Let's see what I can do with this sound now. I'm going to play a note and push hard on that note. So it's cool. We get this like one oscillator kind of moving there to get some kind of dramatic motion, gets kind of dissonant. But I still don't have anything on the slide dimension, and I'd like to add that now. And so I'd like it to control timbre dramatically. If I start moving this cutoff frequency here. I'd like slide to do that, and it's common to set the slide dimension to control filter cutoff, some kind of timbre control. So I'll choose a destination of cutoff 1, 2, which is going to be both of the cutoff frequencies of the two filters that we have in the synthesizer. For a modulation source, I'd like to choose CC74. The slide dimension on the seaboard rise translates to CC or control change 74 MIDI messages. But if I go to modulation source, I don't see a big long list of control changes. Instead, I see control A through F. Now this is common in the logic synthesizers. The reason they do this is they want you to be able to set your studio to work with your controller, right? So this always sends CC74 for slide. So if I can set control A to be CC74, then in every one of my patches, whenever it's using control A as a modulation source, it'll function expressively. So with this one change, I can make almost all my patches respond to the slide dimension. To do this, we have to switch over to the MIDI tab here. And then I can go to Control A, and I do have the long list of CCs now, and we'll choose it to be CC74, otherwise known as brightness. If I go to the modulation matrix, I'll choose the Controller A as my modulation source, which we see here says Control A 74 bright. And then I can choose a very wide uh, modulation range, and I should get a dramatic filter sweep as I slide up on a key wave. And I get pressure also, so it's a really responsive patch and does a lot for us. You know, honestly, I think that pitch manipulation might be a bit too much, so I'm going to reduce that range just a bit. So it's just a little bit of pitch variations. What really cool thing about this is because we're using an MPE controller, these messages are sent for every single note. And I just want to make sure that ES2 is in MIDI mono mode. I'll set that to on with base channel 1. My pitch bend range is 48 semitones. With that, I should be able to do that CC74, do that slide motion on each of my notes that I play independently. Let's try it out. So I can pull that one up. If I bring that down, I can bring another one up, even on a different pitch. And kind of fade in a different sound. Now I'd like to look quickly at Sculpture, because it has a similar modulation matrix, and we can try to maybe use this cool XY touchpad over there. So I'm going to go to another track where I have Sculpture, and I have this really nice preset called Silver Liner. 
Let's just hear what the sound is. And I'm gonna work with this uh, morph pad with the mouse here. These are really cool sounds. I think it'll work well for the dramatic intro for my song. And I see that pad, I immediately want to control it with this XY touchpad, and it's actually very easy to do. Like we have control A through F and ES2, if we look at the bottom of sculpture, we're gonna see that there's an option for morph X and morph Y, and we can choose a CC for that. Let's go over to the Rolly dashboard, and we'll see the XY touchpad has two CCs. We have the Y axis is CC114, and the X axis is CC113. Let's go back to sculpture, and we'll set the morph X to be 113, and the morph Y to be 114. Immediately as I move the XY touchpad, we're gonna see that the morph pad is going with me and I can have a cool performance. Let's try it.